Well, I couldn't avoid it forever. It's time to talk about Boom Studios Firefly Comics, and buckle up because this is not going to be a complimentary video. So I've made a series of videos explaining how all the Dark Horse comics and Titan novels fit into the Firefly timeline. And it may seem odd, therefore, that I've not discussed the comics from Boom Studios, especially considering that they are the current line of Firefly comics. Boom acquired the Firefly license back in 2018, and they've steadily released Firefly comics since then. So why haven't I discussed them and put them into the timeline before now? Well, here's the thing. In my opinion, they kind of suck. At some point I might make a video discussing in depth why these comics are so disappointing, but for now let's just summarise by saying it's very clear that the author, Greg Pak, doesn't understand the characters, the universe, or the lore of Firefly. The characters do not speak or act like their on-screen counterparts. The world building leans way more sci-fi than the show and the movie did. And the result is that the stories just don't feel like Firefly or indeed Serenity. They don't feel like a natural extension or continuation of the show or the movie. Furthermore, Greg Pak is clearly disinterested in weaving his series plot into the pre-existing plot that is set up by the show and the later Dark Horse comics. And outside the stories themselves, in my opinion, Boom Studios has repeatedly used fairly devious marketing tactics that suggest to me that Boom is interested only in squeezing this property for as much cash as they can, rather than truly honouring the series by writing a really good story. Consider this. Dark Horse held the license for something like 13 years. Boom has held it for about three years, and they've already churned out more content than Dark Horse did. But not only is the Boom series quantity without quality, it's also a pretty awkward fit when it comes to continuity. A casual reader may find no problem with it, but a continuity nerd like me, well, I notice the cracks. For this reason, I think it makes most sense to consider the Boom series to be a separate canon from the Dark Horse slash Titan one. Not only does this make the continuity issues disappear, but I think it's better for both canon's stories. Both are more enjoyable if you're not trying to reconcile the two timelines. And this shouldn't be too difficult to come to terms with. Star Wars fans manage to live with two distinct canons that share some material while diverging elsewhere. I'm sure Firefly with a far smaller canon, can manage just as well. So, let's discuss the Boom comics, although, I stress, I am by no means recommending this series. The main Firefly comic series, as I record this video, is up to, I think, issue 30, and that run can be divided into four distinct arcs. So here's a brief overview of these arcs, and I'll fit them in into this new canon, that includes only the original series and the movie to begin with. I'm not going to provide lengthy plot breakdowns, but spoilers will be present. Arc number one, The Unification War. This arc comprises issues number one through twelve, plus the one-shot Bad Company and the free comic book day short, Boss Moon, Birth of a Unificator. The series begins sometime shortly after the last episode of Firefly, Objects in Space, now maybe that's surprising given the title of the arc, and you would be forgiven for thinking that this was a prequel series, and I'll let you make up your own mind whether Boom misled their new readership regarding what this series would be about. But despite the name The Unification War, the series is firmly in the Firefly time period. If you're wondering, the reason that it's called The Unification War is because the events of this tedious 12-issue nonsense ultimately lead to an event which truthfully is barely more than a minor space skirmish between the Alliance and some browncoats that for some reason the characters refer to as the Second Unification War. And yes, it's exactly as stupid as it sounds. Now, before moving on to the next arc, let me pause and make a big exception here. The one-shot, Bad Company, is not written by the author of the main series, Greg Pak. It is written by Josh Lee Gordon and Bad Company is actually fantastic. It's easily the best Firefly material that Boom Studios have produced so far, although 
admittedly the bar is rather low in that regard. It's an origin story about Saffron and it only barely ties into the plot of the Unification War. I'm not going to discuss it at length here, but I have to call attention to the fact that Bad Company is superb and it deserves none of the ire that I direct to the rest of the mainline series. So following on from the Unification War, we have the second arc, New Sheriff in the Verse, which begins with the one-shot The Outlaw Ma Reynolds and continues with Firefly issues 13 through 20. And it should be noted that this seems to become a bit of a habit with this publisher. This one-shot can't be skipped. It's not a bonus. Its story runs straight into the main series. The fact that they give this a different title, it's just a marketing gimmick. It's every bit as much a part of the story as the numbered issues. So this series sees Mal becoming a sheriff for the Alliance. And yes, that sounds really dumb. And I won't say that it's not, but it is at least slightly less dumb than it sounds. I actually think the idea of Mal becoming a sheriff is interesting, but the execution here is horribly bungled. I, I could see Mal being coerced by a small town into becoming a sheriff. It might have been a cool idea to explore. It reminds me of Doctor Who when the third Doctor was stranded on Earth when his TARDIS was taken away for three seasons. Maybe I could have imagined this as being a viable way for Mal to lay low after the events of the movie. Maybe that story could have worked. But here, he's like the top dog sheriff for the whole Georgia system, if I, if I remember this correctly. Georgia is one of the five main solar systems in the verse. So he's not some small town sheriff at all. He's basically like the equivalent of the Attorney General of California. And... <laughs> Yeah, it's silly, so we'll move on. Or rather, maybe we won't, because despite being a new arc, Blue Sun Rising actually flows out of New Sheriff with barely a pause. If the covers didn't alert you to the fact, you'd probably not notice that the arc had changed. Blue Sun Rising is made up of Firefly issues 21 to 24, and the special issues Blue Sun Rising number 0 and number 1. And yeah, this numbering system is just absurd. Boom called this whole arc the first Firefly comic event, but I don't really understand what was an event about it. It's not like the Blue Sun Rising titles were an optional side thing, or that this was some sort of crossover story. They're just the first and last chapters of this arc. And here, here's the really cheeky thing that Boom Studios tried. They published these two issues, Blue Sun Rising number zero and number one, in a single volume later on. Just these two, right? Imagine buying a book that contained only the first and last chapter of a story. Like, in what other situation is it okay to publish that? Anyway, Blue Sun Rising sort of pits Sheriff Mal against the Blue Sun Corporation and, and I'm not joking here, their army of Robocops that have Mal's face and personality programmed into them. Now look, nobody will ever know what Firefly seasons two through seven might have looked like. That ship has sailed. But in my opinion, these comics and novels should present stories that are at least plausible continuations of Firefly. I don't think that anyone can honestly say that Mal-faced Robocops were likely to appear in Firefly Season 2. But the most annoying thing I find from a continuity perspective anyway is how this series wraps up. These three arcs are all set between the series and the movie, but they don't leave the characters where we know they should be either before the movie or before those left behind if they were trying to tie into the original Dark Horse stories. The series leaves Shepherd Book, Simon River, Wash, Zoe, and maybe Inara on Haven, while Mal, Kaylee, and Jane, and this stupid character called Leonard, head back into space. It's bizarre. It makes no continuity sense. It's... it's bad. It's a bad series. Don't buy it. Now, finally, the fourth arc. Return to Earth it was. This is in fact ongoing as I record this. It's set after the movie and as you might have guessed it sees the crew return to Earth that was 
via a portal that the Alliance has built, because obviously that sort of technology definitely exists in Firefly. Now, I'm pretty unforgiving regarding this kind of nonsense. To me, Firefly stands out amongst sci-fi shows because it's so grounded. Firefly doesn't feature most typical sci-fi tropes. There's no aliens, there's no faster-than-light travel, there's no super-advanced AI, there's very limited robotics, there's no teleporters, no time travel, no extra-dimensional stuff. Firefly is... it's dusty. It's cows and horses, it's revolvers and pistols, cowboys and pirates. What made Firefly really special was how much it tended to lean away from all this typical sci-fi stuff. Firefly consistently leant towards the Western genre way more than it did the sci-fi. But clearly the author of Boom series doesn't understand this, because he throws aliens, cyborgs, robots, AI, portals in willy-nilly, because I think this guy doesn't get Firefly. He sees it really as a generic sci-fi, which, I don't know about you, to me, it isn't. Anyway, Return to Earth that was is a bit weird in terms of continuity, as it sort of invites the possibility for the first time that this series is actually acknowledging the Dark Horse series, insofar as Emma, Zoe's daughter, exists in this story and she was introduced in the Dark Horse stories. And for this reason, one might charitably decide to include the post-movie Dark Horse stories into the Boom timeline too. That said, Boom still doesn't appear like it's making any effort to integrate the plot of the Dark Horse stories into their own. Where we leave Mal at the end of No Power in the Verse is nothing like where we find him at the beginning of this arc. In addition to the mainline series, Boom have produced a couple of standalone graphic novels. The first is called The Sting. I have very neutral feelings about it. It's not the disaster that the mainline series is, but it's nothing incredible either. It's an all-girl team-up where Saffron recruits Zoe, Inara, Kaylee, and sort of River to take on a heist. It fits probably after the message before Heart of Gold. The second graphic novel is Watch How I Soar. Boom described this as a series of Wash's memories that flash before his eyes just before he dies in the movie. But honestly, there's nothing in the graphic novel itself that would give you that impression. It comes across as a series of short stories about Wash at various different points in his life. It's okay. It's written by a number of different writers, so some stories are better than others. And because it's somewhat of an anthology, there is a bit of incoherentness to it, but like The Sting, while it's not incredible, it's not actively offensive like the main series either. And finally, I have to talk about Brand New Verse. This is a series which is set about 15 years into the future and centres around a teenage Emma. Some of the original cast do quickly make an appearance as well though. The series is also ongoing and actually it's pretty good. It's promising, at least. It's written by the same guy who did Bad Company, Josh Lee Gordon, and once again you can really see that the quality that results from having a writer that understands and cares about Firefly. The characters sound like they're supposed to. The story has a Firefly vibe to it. So while I don't recommend the mainline series from Boom Studios, so far I do recommend Brand New Verse. Although we are only a few issues in, and I wouldn't put it past Boom Studios to find a way to ruin it, even with a good author at the helm. So there you have it, the Boom timeline explained alongside some perhaps colourful commentary. Some final words. I don't really like thinking about the Boom series much, which is why it's taken so long to make this video. Clearly, I'm not a fan. To be clear, I have no problem with you if you are, but to me, this series just missed the mark again and again. And making matters worse, the previous series by Dark Horse was handled, in my opinion, so well that I find it a real tragedy that this has happened to the series. We may never see the true sequel to No Power in the Verse, and that, that makes me sad. I recognise that my discussion on this series here was maybe fairly cruel and I couldn't discuss any criticism at length because 
I want to keep the video reasonably short. I may make a more detailed and thoughtful critique video of each arc individually. I don't know if there's any appetite for that, but it would involve me having to reread these comics, which it's not really a prospect I relish, so such a video may be some time in the making. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching.